Hello ladies and gentlemen, my name is D Sparrow's Journey, we are back to Firewatch, but not at the point where we last left off in episode 4. I was playing a preview build, and that preview build has no save files, so we are somewhat in a tricky situation over here. More also, because the fully released version, which is now the one I'm playing, has a different start, has a different beginning in the story of the game. So my plan is to show you right now on the fifth episode how the game actually starts. We're gonna go through that until we face the same point when we started with the preview build on episode one. I might record the whole thing so that if something new happens that was not present in the preview build, I will still be able to show you. I am going to try to go over all the steps that I did in the preview build so that if your actions impact the future in the story, that will be the same. Colorado 1975. You see Julia. Now we know a little bit more, even though we're starting the game because we played the preview build. Julia is the woman that I'm married to, supposedly. She's about your age, late 20s, laughing with well-dressed professors and grad students from nearby CU Boulder. You, Henry, are out drinking with your pals. You approach her. Wow. Oh, I'm a stud. You are drunk. You, you're pretty. She says, coolly, you are not, you are a future hangover. What? You reply confused. Someone should buy you a cheeseburger, she says. She flags down a waiter and one week later, you are Julia's boyfriend. That exponentially went fast, I would say. So I'm her boyfriend right now. And I am where I live in the elevator, well. I'm not living in the elevator, but I'm living in this apartment, I would say. So, pick up my backpack. I'm gonna start my journey as a lookout, as a fire watcher now. That's my pickup truck, I would suppose. Mm -hmm. Beer cans, huh? We know these. So, load gear. Let's put the backpack over there. And apparently, I'm leaving home. You date her for over a year. She drives you absolutely nuts. It's great. This is the feeling of love, ladies and gentlemen. That's what they do to us. You move in. You share an apartment near the school with a view of the mountains. You do drink beers out on the deck. You drink beer just about anywhere. Life is good. Julia wants to get a dog. I'm up for that. I like animals. There's a scruffy, undersized beagle. Julia is in love. She wants to bring it with her to class. There's also an intimidating but gentle-eyed German Shepherd. Ozzy! Nothing bad could happen to Julia while walking this dog. It's badass. Ozzy is my dog, by the way, and he's a German Shepherd. You pick up the beagle and she names him Bucket. You adopt a Shepherd and name him Mayhem. Oh my god, this is such a tricky situation. Because in the preview build, I picked up a turtle that I later named Bucket. So this makes total sense if I pick up the beagle now. Let's go with that so that our whole story makes sense. Because honestly, I would go with Shepard right now. Let's go with a Bucket. Beagle named Bucket. Bucket's a good dog, and a week later, you've totally forgotten about the other one. Julia loves him. You love him too. The things we do for women. 1979. This is four years after. You tuck out of the deck. It's summer, 9.30 p.m., and the heat still radiates off of the high desert. What do you think about kids? She asks. Ooh, we're at that level already? Kids? They're not very smart, or good at much. I'm saying if you and I have some. A couple little idiots. One day, 
Why rush? That would be pretty good. We are in our late 20s. So we should be about 32, 33-ish right now. If we have a good job, we have a dog, why not? Let's have a couple of mini buckets. Mini buckets. In that case, we should probably get married. Yeah, I would like that, you say. These kids are going to be screwed up enough. It's probably for the best that their parents are hitched. You say she's absolutely right. Hmm. Did I get to my job or something? Was I always a lookout during this process? I'm not sure because from the preview build I got the idea that I only became a fire watcher after something happened with Julia. I feel like I have been playing Back to the Future or something because I know somewhat what's going to happen from now on. 1980. It's a Thursday night and Julia is four hours late. She doesn't call. You're worried and getting angrier by that minute. She walks in after you've gone to bed. Woman, what you've been doing, woman? She's not quite drunk, but she's clearly been having a fun time. You fight when she gets between the sheets. I will ignore her. No, I will get mad, because it matters to me. She matters to me, what she does matters to me, and I don't feel well when she does that. If I ignore it, it means that I will be okay with it, and I'm not. You call her an inconsiderate asshole. I didn't mean to get mad that much. She tells you to F yourself and to not be such a baby. You call her selfish. At least I'm not insulting her. She knows you mean it and it hurts her feelings. Hey, you just said to F myself. That is worse. In my book. 1981. Julia still likes to draw. She draws plants from her research. She draws all the places you go. She draws you. That's a sign of love. You pose and flex like He-Man. You frolic like a Victoria's Secret model. That's who I am. Absolutely. Julia was right. You are very pretty. Thank you. Okay, here we are. This is a good start. It is. It basically follows all your chapters in your life. Before the actual game. I like that. It puts you in the story. It makes you believe and care about this character over here, which is us. The sunset. 1982. During the summers, you and Julia enjoy walking bucket at night. It would be mayhem if it was the shepherd. There's a festival in town. It brings in folks from faraway places. One of them tries to mug you with a knife. What? Bucket gets kicked. Peepa F dog, Julia yells. She gets flustered and has trouble speaking when she is stressed. You confront, confront the attacker. You scare him away. You beat his goddamn face in. Hell yeah. We've seen previously that I get mad about situations, so I will beat his goddamn face. Your arm gets cut up, but you beat the guy to a pulp. You don't feel very tough. You cry your eyes out before the cops show up. You cry after beating someone? That doesn't make much sense. Regrets, maybe? Julia asks to take a different path from that day forward. You say okay, you don't want to go that way either. From then on, you walk by the river. 1984. We're almost at that point where I was born. Plans to have kids get waylaid by work. Yeah, I'm always in the forest. It's a lonely place. Julia gets offered a job at Yale. Yale is in Connect Connecticut. I'm sorry about that. 2,000 miles away. It's a great job. Associate Department Chair. She wants to move. You absolutely do not. Convince her not to take the job. Agree if she commutes back and forth. 
I don't want to slow down anyone, I guess. I would not want that. And I've called her selfish in the past, so let's not do the same mistake. You ask her if she'll commute back and forth. You don't want to move to Connecticut. I would like the option to move there because I would go. She says that it'll be hard, but she'll do it for you if you won't move. You tell her not to pass it up if it's what she wants. She agrees. She flies back to Boulder three times each semester. This is gonna be really tough. Julia is sent home from Yale on paid leave after having an episode. She lost it on a colleague for borrowing books that were important to her research. She didn't remember she had happily loaned them to him just two days prior. That's her mistake, I guess. She was found crying in the stairwell. You say that maybe you guys should talk to someone about it. You make macaroni and drink wine and try to forget about it. That's right. We need to have a party once in a while. It works! You watch Dallas on TV and sleep together on the couch. What a lovely couple, we two. And here I am, in my job again. A very lonely job. Journal, pick up. Yeah, because there's nothing else I can do. I can't stand up! I skip leg day. Do I write on a journal? What? Let's totally forget about that. That was not me. That was a troll that Julia found in the wilderness, and she decided to draw him. Bucket is getting older. Julia comments that it's kind of nice because he gets in less trouble around the house. The dog is gonna die, isn't it? A week later, she goes back to the university. At this point? Really? 1987, and I was born. 86, I was one year old already in 87. Julia's affliction gets worse. She can't remember things in class. Her research is in shambles. She drives her car to the next town over for no particular reason and has to be brought home by the police. She is devastated. She is sent home on permanent medical leave. That's not great. Some days you get the Julia who calls you a dope and your unborn children like little idiots. Other days you get a stranger. She pulls you into bed to make love. After five minutes, she goes into a panic, believing her dad is at the door. That's not very romantic. You tell her family they are crushed and begin to make trips to and from their home in Australia to visit her. Australia is quite far away. For a while, your friends come by with little things to brighten the day. She gets worse. 1988. You spend your days following Julia around the house. You count the seconds between the two weekly visits from Daniel, the nurse. He suggests that Julia could live somewhere else, somewhere with 24 hours care. At home. At home. It sits with you for a couple months. You decide to move her into a full-time care facility. You are determined to take care of her by yourself. Yes, because that's what true love is about. At least that's how I feel. Here we are again. How can I take care of her if I keep coming back to the forest? Did I find a native girl that I fell in love with? Am I betraying Julia? Am I ignoring her illness? Look. Adir. Let's slowly get closer. No, he noticed me. And now he's gonna run. That was a strange jump, if you ask me, but hey, I will not discuss how deers jump. It is impossibly hard. The worst is when you get mad at her, like when she tries to cook her own food. You can't do anything without her, and she can't do anything without you. Hmm. When she goes to sleep, you stay up for a few hours, drinking on the deck, watching baseball in the summer. College basketball in the winter. Drinking then too. Am I gonna become a, an alcoholic? You start going out after you put her to bed. The first time you do it, you worry about her getting up and walking around while you're gone. You put a chair in front of the bedroom door. Come on! She's not a freaking animal. Let's not do that. 
You trust that she sleeps like a rock. That's the problem though. I would like a third choice of you remain at home and take care of her. Don't want to feel like I go out and something will happen or there's a big chance something will happen. But I will take that risk because she still has some dignity and I want to treat her that way. You go to the same bar at the boring end of Pearl Saint. It's nice there. Over time, you tell Shayla, the bartender, everything. It's a huge weight off. You're at home and in bed by 1 a.m. a couple nights a week. You look forward to those nights. So the native girl is actually Shayla, or Shayla, the bartender. 1989. One night, you are stopped at a DUI checkpoint. You blow a 10 and are taken to jail for the night. God damn it, Henry. You consider trying to hide it, but you tell your sister-in-law, Susan. Julia's parents take the next plane from Australia. They can't believe the state your house is in. Then tell you Julia is coming to live with them. You don't argue. You say you'll visit soon. A few weeks go by. Summer is coming and you see an ad in the paper for a job. This is where Firewatch comes in. You take it. And then our lookout job starts. And this is, ladies and gentlemen, this is the point where we started playing Firewatch in the very first episode in this series. So right now, if you are curious to know and if you have just landed over here for the first time, go back to the first episode, watch the first four episodes and then come back because I'm currently gonna cut this and get back to the point where we last left off in episode 4. Be right back. Uh, this shale slide is steep. How do you expect me to get down this? I don't remember it being that bad. It's not even named on our topos. Yeah, well, I'd go with Widowmaker. Come on, it's really not that bad. It's a 50-foot cliff made of rocks that look like knives. They just look like knives, okay? Plus, there's already a Widowmaker on the backside of Carter Mountain. It would be... No, no, no! I know you guys are setting up bottle rockets out here, okay? How? Because we're hiding in the bushes and spying on us? Give him a break, Lily. She probably hasn't seen boobs in 20 years. <laughs> He's probably still a virgin. We hiked all the way out here to get away from guys like you. Duck all of your stuff. Fireworks, whiskey, you name it. What? You dick! Also, setting off fireworks out here isn't just stupid, it's illegal. Yeah, so is stealing, asshole. That's so fucking bogus. You're gonna pay for that. Can we just get out of here? There's some guy out here giving me the creeps. The creeps? Wait, he's looking at you? Is he doing anything else? I... I don't think so. Henry, there's... there's something I... Something someone should have told you about this area. What is it? It's... outside. Come on. The whole thing. And people come and go as they please. It's... it's... it's madness. Yeah, yeah, okay. I get it. Look, bumping into someone in the middle of nowhere is part of the fun. You wake up pretty early then, huh? As soon as the sun comes up. Forest Service really frowns on us putting up curtains for some reason. Uh, I just covered my head with my pillow. Seems to do the trick. Wow. The forest could never burn down on your watch. I found an old notepad of, uh, I guess, songs. Someone was writing a song called Old Shoshone. Old Shoshone, where the sky is blue and the teens are nude. <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's just like that, except about ten times more depressing. Uh, I found a sweatshirt from the University of Eastern Colorado. Maybe it's one of the girls? I mean, it's been here a long time. There's a University of Eastern Colorado? I really don't think there is. Why would somebody make that up? Right, and then put it on a sweatshirt. The world's a weird place. Hey, who are these guys, Ron and Dave? They're leaving notes for each other in the boxes. Is there any chance one of them was that guy I saw in the canyon? You know, the guy with the flashlight? No, they're both rangers. They're not out here this season. 
I didn't really know him that well, but I always assumed the only thing Ron cared about was chasing tail and getting loaded. It's somehow comforting to know that he was able to keep up a correspondence with someone who wasn't going to send him a topless Polaroid.